Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So, today is the start of building the Dornier DOS 17Z in 172nd scale from FX. This is the new 2022 release, although it's the 2014 boxing, but with uh, new box art and new decals. So, it looks really fresh and it's not too bad, not too old a moulding. If you just want to see what's inside the box and what you get for your money, then the companion box opening video is what you probably want to watch first. There should be a link coming up here now to it. If you've already got one and you want to know how to put it together, then this very much is the video for you. In today's program, which is part one, I'll be going from the very, very beginning of making it all the way through the fuselage, wings, engine construction and so forth up to a point where I'm ready to start uh, priming and giving it the first coat of paint. In part two, we'll be finishing the paint job, putting in things like the undercarriage guns, finishing off the aircraft and doing some weathering as well to make it look used and a bit more realistic. All of that will come in part two, which will be appearing very, very soon. Now, if you enjoy the video, and I really hope you do, then please do remember to give it a thumbs up, the imperial thumbs up on the like button down there. And if you haven't, then please do subscribe to the channel. All you have to do is click on that small button down there in the bottom right corner. If you click on the little bell symbol that pops up as well, then you'll get a little notification when all my new videos arrive. If you want to give a bit more concrete support, you know what to do. You can either do that through Super Thanks or through any of my partner programs. Particularly useful if you're gonna buy one of these because you can do that through my link to the online store or buying any sort of modeling supplies which you can do through my Amazon online store. Neither of those will cost you an extra penny. It's just that those big corporations have to give me a little bit of cash towards running the channel, which is not a bad thing. I think you'll agree. Anyway, let's get on and make a start on the Dornier DO17 in 172nd scale from FX. So the first thing I need to start with, or I need to, I'm going to start with, is an awful lot of these parts need the RLMO2 um, interior grey. So I'll start spraying those now. When I first um, looked at the kit and it said skill level 3, I thought, really, for a Dornier 17? But I've got to tell you, some of these parts in here, in the cockpit area and things, are difficult here. For example, this, this is um, part of the structure that holds the seats. I suspect that may even be the rudder pedal. <clears throat> you can see there's there's been a, a, a nib here, the, the things that they have to allow the plastic, like voids for the plastic to flow into to make sure the whole part is good. Now I've trimmed off and you can see here, there's this little bit here that I've got to take off with a knife. That's a really, really delicate part with a really, really awkward spot there. Um, of course, my, my little toothpick sanders might work on that as well, but I'll just take a bit of this down with a knife first and then with the sander. Okay, so cut, cut it as much as I dare. And I'm gonna use my little toothpick sanders. If you've not seen these before, um, A, why haven't you watched my other videos? And B, what this is, is a flat toothpick with just a very thin strip of sandpaper on it. And it really does well for little awkward places like this you just wanna finish off. Okay, so step one, I think this is the support for the pilot seat that goes into place. Now, let's, I don't know if you can see this. I hope you can. You see, it kind of sticks out like that. You go through that and it kind of hooks over the edge like that. And that holds it in place like that. So a bit of um, ultra thin on there, I think, to keep it in place. On the other side, it's much the same, except of course the other. This part is bigger. The the top panels, floor panel, whatever, still hooks over the top, and then just sort of sits on top. So, so this this I guess seat support here hooks through the whole 
and sits on the edge there and then this can sit down properly it's yeah kind of tricky but I think it works and now we'll start on some of just doing a bit of detailing on some of these radio boxes and things like that in here um, just paint the the main boxes black these four here and then once that's done we might just give them a tiny bit of airbrush to just bring up the airbrush dry brush dry brush not airbrush dry brush just to bring up some of the uh, detail on the surface and while I'm waiting for those radio sets to dry what I'm going to do is just add some wash to the inside of the fuselage and what I've done is I've gone over with a, a wet brush first and that's kind of left some water in all the edges and crevices and all that um, then you can just apply some wash and the wash kind of pulls into the corners nicely um, it's it's quite a dark wash uh, for two reasons really firstly it's going to be inside so you may only just sort of catch a glimpse of it anyway especially on here because this is like the roof of the Bombay area or whatever um, so you may not see much of this anyway and secondly it does dry quite a lot lighter than it looks as well but just like all the fuselage area here just like plenty of of this one that's why it's called a wash you chuck a load of it on and it will dry nicely and give us loads of detail on the inside again because this is going to be inside the plane uh, the contrast needs to really push up so this is essentially just black wash I've put in okay just let that dry then the seat can pilot seat can go in it sort of goes between you can see it sits on those crosses there either side that's nice and snug and the control column goes in as well into this piece slots in here on the side now once this is all glued up well, I'm going to just go around and touch up all of the paintwork make sure it all looks nice but that's basically the pilot's workstation right there also in the front section is this piece I've um, painted the black bits in and I've also just done a bit of white um, dry brushing over it all just to bring out some bit of detail so we just sit those in like so okay the one on each side little fiddly they clip kind of round the at back and then sit down level like that now the detail in this front end it's it's easiest to first of all just line up this end with the uh, the spar here and then you'll just find if that's in roughly the right place it will just naturally fall in so this the switch box here can't go above the level of the uh, the combing here for the canopy this can ov over overhang there that's fine and then it all sits in here now what I've done already you'll notice is I've um, done a, a general wash in black sort of diluted black um, I've then painted in the black uh, for the uh, machine gun magazines there and then once that's done I've just given it the whole the whole thing a dry brush with white to bring up the contrast if you're going to put washes in for shadows you need to do a bit of dry brushing as well for the highlights and then all this switch gear and levers like just sort of pop straight out it's really really easy to do it take, takes seconds to do but good dry brush technique practice your dry brush technique and detailing becomes an absolute breeze next there's this wheel that goes in again I'm going to align that towards pretty much at the top of the combing and then it all just sort of slots into place just like like that okay I don't know what it is, uh, whether it's undercarriage or Bombay opening or whatever, but 
It's a wheel, it's a part, it's got to go in. Someone will tell me. Someone will know the interior of the Dornier 17 and someone will tell me. And that's what I love about doing these videos. And now the um, pilot seat can go in. There's a couple of um, couple of pegs here at the back. I don't know if you can see that. You can see there's a couple of pegs on the seat and they go in those L-shaped slots there on the wall. Like so. And then one sits in the front on this uh, on this beam here now at this point if you're having the aircraft with the wheels up you need to um, put the interior structure in here uh, the wheel and the spat as it were on the mounting all in here if you're not doing if you're doing the wheels down then this spat will sit around this hole on the outside so you don't need to worry about any of this okay only if you've got the wheels up on the other side of the fuselage there's this tab here and that sits into the back of the lower of these two boxes at the front of this part then everything else just slots into place okay so what i've done on this one as well just like the other one i've given it a panel wash first and then dry brushed it with white just to bring out all the detail right uh, now there's two seats need to go in here um, the bo bottom one is fine it goes it goes in here um, just you can see these two tabs here and then on the bottom of the seat you've got like two line two slots and they line up like that okay that's not a problem what is a problem is up here the next one's up because this is under shot slightly on the molding now you can't put the seat in place here because these two bits here don't point out far enough so i'm going to have to think of a way of putting these on without using the uh the required what i might do is just tack those on like that maybe I don't know if you can see i just sort of tack them onto the sides and then the uh the top corner here maybe onto the fuselage it's not great i have to say that is not great but i cannot be bothered waiting for a new spare part so that's how it's going to be right so the, the workaround i've got here for this this part with the uh undershot support i've it sits right on the very edges i don't know if you can see right on the very edges of the stubs of what's there and what i've done is actually i've just chopped off the corner of the seat there that way they they kind of sit vertically they kind of sit as they should but you know it's a bodge let's face it it's a bodge it's a fix i don't like it but there we go Right, and now the two halves of the fuselage go together. Um, there's plenty of uh, pins up here to align everything. Up here, and at the front there's a couple of tabs. Now we're going to just uh, tape these parts here maybe. And tape the front ends up and then uh, tape the back ends up and then just use some extra thin cement okay so hopefully I can show you what I did this was the um, this sort of uh, whatever it is co-pilot navigator front gunner engineer whatever this seat was the one that caused problems because it was badly um, placed so what I've done is I've just notched it in with this Poseidon pilot seat. Um, let's see if I can get better light on that. Yeah, just about. Um, so I've had to notch out the top of the seat there, um, put it between those two places because of the undershot um, mounting. The other seat is okay. It's at the bottom there where it belongs. So uh, we can move on. 
Okay, so this um, these chair supports go on next. These are going to dangle um, above the bottom of the cockpit floor, so they go on like this. Then the seat sits into the cockpit base like so. Facing forwards or backwards? It's facing backwards. Of course he's facing backwards, he's a rear gunner. Goodness me, Gary, wake up. There we go. It's a bit tricky getting those um, seat bases in the right place, but once they're done, then there you go, there's your man, rear gunner. So that's your four crew seats done. Cool. Right, there is this piece now that needs to go in on the underside, and uh, this bit here is transparent and there's three windows here so we're going to mask them off. I'm going to put them in now uh, because it is sort of integral to the structure. I don't want to be really adding it and painting it and all the rest of it later on so I'll put it in now but I do want these masks on. So there's three for the three windows here and there's five masks to fit this uh, circle here because it's bowed out you can't just put a disc on because the disc won't lie flat on a spherical surface so these have got all the edge contours here cut out and then little nicks in them to help fold them over we'll see how we go so i'll put the windows on first and then i'll put the uh, big mask on for the middle okay so there we go a few short minutes later make sure that's lined up nicely and it's done and it can now go into the base of the aircraft down here just need to spread these these two sides out a little bit to get it in there we go, like that. Right, well, whilst that's all drying up, I'll put the uh, instrument decal onto the instrument panel. And just let that dry. Right now, this looks like a, uh, a, a a tricky bit. Okay, so this bit here has got to go into this bit here, and it's going to be quite an interesting job. It has to go underneath here, um, yeah. See, there's that that little cutout at the bottom, that circular, semicircular cutout. It's got to go around that semicircular bit just where my finger is there. So that's um, part of the problem. It's got to go underneath all of that, slot through there, into there, up on that. Oh, mind you back there, please, sir. Would you mind also awfully? And it's got to then come under here. It's got to feed through there. Feed through there somehow. I have to tell you, this really is a proper pain in the backside. Um, so you don't want to just shove it because it's going to knock other stuff out of the way that I don't want knocked out of the way yet. There we go. Right, so so that's where it's, it sits on top of. You can see the end of the transparent part there. It sits on there, and these bits go like. 
allegedly these these go in there I suppose up against the wall this is really not um, not the greatest of pieces to do and there's a there goes a tab there all right sits up against that tab obviously okay that bit's okay so what I'm going to do is um, get that in get that sort of down down there in place like that then I'll worry about the front end so I'll do this bit first okay so I presume all I've got to do now now that this is sort of stuck in place I think all I've got to do really now is get this this stuck in there like that this panel stuck in there like that like that and then that's all done so what I'm actually going to do is just tack a bit of uh, super glue in there and that should do the trick right so this is cross member that goes in across the bottom of the Bombay doors there gives it some strength as well and then these uh, ribs for the spars I guess they are go in D4 and D5 the parts and if, if you mess them up if you take them off and forget the back one's got more of a curved top here the, the front one's more straight across okay so if you do mess them up you can at least figure out which way round they go and there we go these things will be supporting the um, bombs later as well this little inspection window goes in as well in here then there's this rear piece to support the bomb racks that goes in there's a couple of tabs up at the top there and there's also a piece over here so there we go that's that that's that that's that there we go and then the instrument panel goes in there's um they make anything easy on this kit you know that do you know what they really don't make anything easy the other problem of course is when you're filming everything sometimes your um, access can be a little restricted purely by the need to have a camera or a phone or something there to record your nightmares Now that looks a bit more promising. That looks promising. I'll fiddle around with this a little bit more. Because if I film it when I'm fiddling around, there may be one or two words you don't want to hear from me. Or maybe you do. Anyway, I'll just um, faff around with these a bit more, get those up into place, and then that's going to probably be about right like that. There we go, got there in the end pretty much where we needed it. Now, you know, looking at the cockpit, it's, it's, it is really beautifully detailed. Um, and you can pick out a lot of detail. And it is such a faff to get it all together though. Um, I'll do a little bit of wash on those seats to bring those out as well, I think. I don't know why, I probably won't ever see them again. But we'll give it a go. Lovely, lovely amount of detail. Quite a faff to get it though. Okay, and now the upper surface of the wing can go on and it sort of goes underneath these protruding bits at the front first. Push those all the way forward and then the back goes down. Okay, so we just need to try and close that gap as much as we can there on either side. Keep that 
gap cleared. Now, what I do like is that the join here follows a panel line that's already there. So we just have to smooth out this little fillet piece here. Um, same at the front, we just have to smooth out the fillet because the panel line actually follows around. So that's a nice touch. Okay, so onto the wings now. We need to form the back of the engine bay and undercarriage bay. So there's a part here, it kind of sticks through here. There's a couple of tabs that stop it going too far. And then it needs also to join into the back of the part like that. Okay, there's one of these on each wing. Then the lower halves of the wing can join the upper halves. And we're definitely going to need some clamps for these. And while that far wing's setting up, I'll do the uh, engine nacelles for the other wing that's already done. So that goes together with that and that, and then it all slots over here and into a channel either side, and that sort of sets the angle between them nicely. And there we go. And then the rear of the engine mount the firewall, rear bulkhead, call it what you will sits into place here. I just need to a bit more up to there we go like that. Then on the um, support for the engine, mounting for the engine I guess it is, there's these what look like air intakes to me. Maybe they are air intakes, I don't know, but they look like air intakes, so that's what I'm going to call them for the moment. There we go. Then onto that goes what I imagine to be uh, the exhaust collector ring. And the last thing I'll do for tonight, at least, is put these up. Uh, engine mountings into place at the front of the nacelle. Now you'll notice I've already painted the um, exhaust collectors uh, in like a burnt metal sort of exhausty sort of colour. Okay so we'll just put those on, one on each side and leave that all to set overnight. Right, so we're going to start assembling the engines now and on the back of the um, engine itself you'll see there's a small notch and a big notch this lines up with the rear structure has a small notch and a big notch on the other side of the engine is just the one small notch and that lines up with this small notch here okay so you so you can't get them the wrong way around basically just glue them together then when the engine's complete, let me try and show you this a bit better. When the engine is complete, there's a bit here that sticks out the side. That points towards the aircraft. So this has to be the port engine. I'll put the engine. There's three um, mounting notches and three slots on the engine itself. You can see, and it all sort of kind of all matches up with the um, exhaust collector ring and all that okay so just do that for the other side as well while I'm waiting for those to dry I'll put together the tailplane this just sort of clips together we can run some extra thin along the edges and uh, clamp it all together um, the bottom comes in one piece top comes in two pieces and there we go the odd thing with this is that uh, you can actually pose the elevator trimmed up and down which is quite unusual but there we go
I'll just get these uh, glued up properly. The tailplane assembly or horizontal stabilizer, as I'm told to call it, fits in here like this. Now it fits flush and level like that, or you can put it up to 15 degrees apparently like this so it kind of, sort of sits level when you're on the ground I guess um, I don't know if that's a trim thing or I, I don't know someone again as usual someone will know what that's all about but I'm going to keep it level myself then the elevators can go in and the elevator the actuator arms fit into these little square slots then the elevators sit themselves sit into the channel in there so just make sure that they go into those slots and sit flat they do there is like a a cutout there in the back of the uh, horizontal stabilizer the tailplane as I like to call it um, and it should just fit into that okay then there's just a blanking piece that goes on the top to hold everything together. So this fits on here, like so. And just holds the whole assembly together. And what I'm going to do is just put a clamp onto that to keep it in place while it sets. If a clamp will go on. There we go. Oh. Tricky chaps. Johnny Dornier. There we go. There we go. That'll do. And we'll keep that in place until it sets. There we go. That that should work. That should hold everything together. Right, we're going to make the engine covers now. Now, they come in two halves. And do you want the the halves where there's just this one little notch? they go together like that then they sit on the ring so that the other side doesn't actually connect together it just sits on the the, the front ring okay so you need to just um, finesse it a bit around there you also want the gap to be at the in the ring here to be at the top it's quite a fiddly bloody thing. I, yeah, it must be another way of doing it um, somehow. So that gap is there. Then it meets up at the bottom there. On like that. There we go kind of like that and then just sort of fiddle around until it all sits in place properly it's uh, do you know what? I w really wish they could have made it a bit more simple um, and a bit more obvious really so that's anyway so you've got one one side is just this tiny little notch the other side has got a, this big sort of Christmas tree of a notch and that's important because the um, exhaust stubs are going to come out the top of that. Okay. Fit it all together. Do the other side the same. And let them dry. The ailerons can go into place as well at this stage. I'm going to put the covers for the flap tracks on the flaps now. They are sided, so there's a one goes one side, one goes the other. Now I've put the sm these smaller ones on because I'm having the flaps deployed. If you're not having the flaps deployed, if you're having them oh, um, retracted, there's a bigger unit that goes in here, and also you will probably want to trim off these flap hinges here. Um, and then just fit it flush but because I'm having the flaps open I've got these smaller flap covers and the hinges are going to be intact this will all get painted uh, RLM blue pale blue also put on the well I'm 
got things bits and pieces to do I'll put this fairing on for the tail wheel all this is going to be painted um, blue remember so I just want to get a lot of this done as I can a lot of what I'm doing now is also prep for painting now I'm going to have the Bombay's open on my kit but I'm also going to be spraying all this blue so what I'm going to do is put the closed Bombay doors on just with a bit of white PVA to hold them in place just literally a, a spot here and a spot here just to hold them in place so they don't come off but I can easily just get a knife under that edge later and just pop them off and clean them up and that would be grand because I don't want the paint to be going inside so use it as a paint mask basically you can do the same thing with the undercarriage bays because the closed wheel wells fit over really nicely and there's nothing to stop them so just a bit of white glue top and bottom um, just a little bit just to hold it in place then you can spray the whole thing later won't get your wheel wells full of blue paint and have to stuff them pack them whatever and it just makes life a lot easier and under the tail plane horizontal stabilizer call it what you will these pieces go um, there's a little hook end here that goes into a hole there and then the front goes into that part there so these these sorts of things do seem unnecessarily complicated and I'm sure there's a good reason why they do this I'm not sure what it is I'm sure there's a good reason why it's like that but there we go anyway those two operating balance arms are in now the engine covers can go on they are quite fiddly a fit but they do go on so they need to push right up against the stubs of the exhaust and also these air intakes here and here and they can just sit like that then there's a filler piece that goes in up here between the exhaust stubs and sort of completes the upper part of the engine cover it's quite a tight fit right time for oh. God, I shouldn't be doing this. I, I don't know why I do this, but anyway, I do. Time for a quick rant. Look, this moulding here. Rory, there we go. Look, this just isn't good. It's right on the transparency. I, you know, hang on, look, I'll cut this out there. There we go. It's right on the window. So if there's any sort of stuff left over from the cutting it off, which there will be, you have to be so careful you're gonna to have to use a sharp knife now you can't sand that because you will catch the window so you have to cut that why not inject it from below all right I've seen it done on lots of other people's kits inject it from below then the connection the actual sprue line as it were comes to the bottom of the piece not right at the front of the piece right on the glass it's really difficult to trim that out please 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 think about that in future thank you very much so the next task is putting on the masks on all of the glass work because we're going to put that on in a bit or sort of temporarily at least um there is an awful lot of this on on this alone there's 26 um pieces to go on um, I think there's something like 31 on the other sheet plus 6, 5, 36 on the other sheet in total. So that's 62, 62 little bits of paper to put on all the glass work. That's quite a lot. But just work your way through it. Start at one end, work your way through, keep an eye on, on the uh, placement map, but also the map of where the parts are on the sheet get the sheet lined up in the same way and just work your way through 
it takes time but you know that's the way it is it's a lot easier than painting by hand trust me All we need to do now is the other two major parts of glass. All right, so that's the three principal um, bits of greenhouse done um, with their masks. So what I'm going to do now is put those onto the aircraft, but just with little tacks of um, white glue for the moment, because I'm going to want to take these off to put in things like uh, guns later on and things like that. So I'll tack them in for now just so that I can paint the model, spray the model, and then we'll come back, take them off again, um, put the guns in, and then put them back on permanently. There are four pieces of glass as well that need to go on the back of the aircraft and just sort of sit in there and just tack them into place with a bit of um, ultra thin glue do be really really careful of these because if you lose them you ain't going to find them again you really are not going to find these so be really really careful of how you cut them off the sprue and then how you look after them before they go on the kit well there we are day one not a bad um, bit of progress today we've made the bulk of the kit really um, done all the masking blocked off a few bits um, so tomorrow we'll just give it a bit more of a tidy up make sure all of these um, these seams that I've filled are looking good they feel nice and smooth anyway um, just uh, do a little bit of work on these engine covers but otherwise it's ready for our first paint so um, RLM light blue on the bottom uh, dark green and green black on the top and then we will make um, when it's painted we'll do the undercarriage we'll do uh, finish off the fins I'll do do the undersides first then the fins can go on mask it off put the fins on then I can do the rest in the dark colors um, put the guns in put the uh, transparencies back on where they belong the propellers at the front end and then of course to the bomb bay uh, fill it with bombs and then then maybe do a bit of um, weathering a little bit of um, coloring and maybe a bit of staining as well here and there and it will be ready uh, so it's gonna be a packed day but a good one I think we've made a lot a lot of progress today hopefully should finish the build tomorrow do come back mm -hmm. 